Can you beat Risk of Rain 2 with no items? For those of you who don't know, Risk of Rain 2 is a third person shooter roguelike that quickly goes from this to this. Risk of Rain 2 is all about picking up items to increase your overall power. But I say screw that. You're not my dad, Hopu. You can't tell me what to do. So it's time for me to do a run without items because my father didn't love me enough. Well, since we're doing this challenge, we don't need these anymore. Oh, or these. So what character are we gonna be using for this challenge? All right, let's see. Not that guy. No, not her. Maybe? Eh, probably not. Certainly not. Kinda cool. Hmm? I found it. Bandit's gonna be our survivor of choice this run. Other than being a sexy little demon, he's got some assets. Wait, wrong character. You see, Bandit isn't your average survivor. He is the only survivor with infinite scaling. Desperado. The Bandit's special skill has no ceiling. So we're gonna use and abuse this so that we don't have to equip ourselves with items like the peasantry. Hmm, yes. A quick explanation of how Desperado works. For those of you who are curious, anytime you get a finishing blow with Desperado, you gain one token which increases the Desperado damage by 10%. Do this ad infinitum and you become a god. So really, all our mission is here, stack as much as we can. Seventeen stacks later, let's actually see if this works. Oh god. Oh fuck. We need way more stacks. Now I'm not gonna spoil it too hard for you, but this was a challenging challenge. Maybe that's why they call it that, I guess. It took me a few times before I developed an adequate strategy. The first time? No damage. The second time, no damage. The third time, no bitches. Knowing my basic demographics, I feel like you can relate. With many failures under my belt, I think it's about time that we finally enterprise, adopt, and underwhelm. To do this, my new goal is to hit 100 stacks of Desperado before we leave stage one. Cue the montage. Nice. So with our 100 stacks of Desperado tokens, we go to the next stage. And yeah, uh, we kind of have a problem. Desperado stacks reset every stage. What we could do is go through all the stages as quick as possible and then farm tokens once we get to stage 6 Mythrix. However, because I have an actual life and I totally don't have time to be playing video games this much, just like all of you Cheeto dust wielding nerds living in your mom's basement, okay? I totally have more things to do. Seriously, I have a life. She just goes to another school, you wouldn't know her. So to save myself some time so I can hang out with more models, we're gonna be using the Persistent Desperado Tokens mod, which allows us to keep all of our hard earned stacks. Now you might be thinking, R&D, that's pretty broken, don't you think? I'll let the results speak for themselves. It's harder than it sounds, okay? Now all that's left to do is to actually put this baby into action. Invest early in as many Desperado stacks as we can and roll through the rest of the game. Another time-saving strat that I utilized here was activating the teleporter and stepping outside it. Little known fact is, if you start the teleporter, more enemies end up spawning more frequently. That means I get way more fun little balloons to shoot right out of the sky. Even with these flawless tactics, I managed to leave the stage at about... 15 minutes? What the fuck was I doing here? Anyway, bing bang boom, vagrant slain, stage completed, and we do that on repeat. Somehow, miraculously, I got two void seeds, two different maps, and Sundered Grove. Never let anyone tell you that gaming isn't hard. Also, when I got into stage 5, look at this giga brain play. A grandparent spawned as the teleporter boss, I got it half health, I let a void infester take it over, 
and then the grandparent killed all of the enemies in an AoE around me. That's some big brain thinking coming out from me. Not your average bear here. I totally didn't just miss the Void Investor and it ended up working out for me. That's not what happened. Now it's time we get to the main portion of our programming today. Kicking the shit out of Mithrix. Everything else before this might have been hard, but the fact that I have no items and I have no way of skipping all the way up to Mithrix means that I have to do the pillars. I'd actually rather cut off my entire foot than having to do the rest of these pillars, but sadly Jigsaw went out of business so I don't have that option anymore. So cut all the boring shit and we're finally flying our ass up the Mithrix. Now with literally zero mobility, we're gonna have to get on the platform as quick as possible. Mithrix is faster than me even with my utility skill, and all it takes is one bonk and I'm gone. With a little mac and cheese, we finished the first phase and now we have to deal with his minions. I do an insane amount of damage and I'm just getting more stacks, so not a bad deal. The next phase of Mithrix is basically the same, but this time I have to watch out for revolving doors. Something that's been a little bit dangerous for me. My grandfather actually died in a revolving door. Oh! And as quick as it started, it ended. Because phase four, he just takes all of your items and I have no items, I'm kind of the advantaged one here. Now here's where shit gets real. We have to take one of these floaty orbs and hopefully spawn somewhere where we can actually reach the rescue ship in time. With absolutely zero mobility, if we end up choosing incorrectly, we just lose. So yes, you can beat Risk of Rain 2 with no items. Let me tell you the euphoria I felt when I saw that I actually made it in time. Unspeakable pleasure. But anyway, hats off to everyone who made it this far. Maybe drop a sub? Question mark? Anyway, Swagmoney69 out. Tips Fedora.